we've been led to believe the differences between high quality 100% grass fed beef and cheap industrial grain fed beef are insignificant. Interesting that people say how meat is produced doesn't matter, yet they won't touch farm-raised fish with a 10-foot pole, acting as if it's poisonous. At least farm-raised fish has plenty of wild fish in its diet. Feedlot cows don't even necessarily get a single blade of grass. Cheap, grass-fed beef can be produced on a feedlot fed only GMO feed and GMO corn stalks, which are technically considered a form of grass. Cows in an industrial feedlot setting can't walk around and are not fed their natural diet. Disease and death become rampant without antibiotics as well as insecticides to control parasites. Without agrochemicals, this way of raising animals would not be possible. People bring up that omega-3 and omega-6 are more imbalanced in grain-fed beef and that it also has less micronutrients than grass-fed beef, but this is the least of the problems as you can get omega-3 and micronutrients from other sources. Industrial beef has three big issues you cannot work around. Estrogen hormones, antibiotics, and herbicides. The health effects of meat and the way the animals are raised is connected. I don't think you can deny that. Hormones, including multiple estrogens, are injected and implanted in time-release form in the animals to fatten them up. The industry reports 15% increase in weight. Estrogens tend to lower testosterone in mammals as well. Feedlot meat is also loaded with xenoestrogens from herbicides that are used on grain and even sometimes grass. Many people are afraid of plastic because of these xenoestrogens. Canned food is considered to be very high in xenoestrogens. Yet feedlot beef can have almost 300 times more xenoestrogens than canned food. Why aren't people talking about this? Atrazine is a xenoestrogenic herbicide and endocrine disruptor. Here is a visual of it causing ovaries to grow in a frog's testicles. FDA officially has a limit of 0.02 parts per million of atrazine in meat, but they don't routinely test. Even those levels are horrifyingly high compared to healthy male estrogen levels of 0.00002 parts per million, over 1,000 times more. Here is Dr. Anthony J mentioning how feedlot cows in some cases have tens of thousands of times the levels of estrogen in a healthy man. Atrazine in the feed ingredients ingested by the cattle could be transferred into the biological samples and consequently can be considered as a potential hazard for public health. Moving on to antibiotics. Antibiotics in our animal foods alter and disrupt our gut microbiome, impacting digestion and production of most of your neurotransmitters. Not to mention potentially impairing our body's ability to produce vitamin K2 which is used in testosterone production in the body. These antibiotics have also been shown to reduce short-chain fatty acid production, aka butyrate, something commonly associated with good gut health. Not only that, countless men following a cheap beef carnivore diet have reported testosterone as well as libido crashing. And we know how much the carnivore community loves anecdotal evidence. Shouldn't you be in ideal sexual health on a meat-based diet? If so, why are all these men losing their sex drive and why is their testosterone in the dumps? I would argue that unexpected weight gain is the most significant problem people are having on this diet. And all of these people are consuming and advocating for industrialized meat. Official USDA numbers report low levels of antibiotics in beef, but they only test a fraction of a percent of the cows and they don't test effectively for all of the metabolites. As a result, 
the official numbers mislead people to think that antibiotics aren't a concern. There's no easy fix here. It's impractical to test any large percentage of animals comprehensively. We need to raise animals better. Balancing omega-3 to omega-6 ratio isn't being emphasized. If omega-6 isn't well balanced with omega-3, like the diet most of us evolved on, it can imbalance the endocannabinoid system. Today, ECS imbalance has been linked to appetite control problems, food intake dysregulation, energy imbalance and obesity, neuroprotection, neurodegenerative diseases, stroke, mood disorders, emesis, modulation of pain, inflammatory response, and may be relevant to cancer, emesis being vomiting. A lower ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids is more desirable in reducing the risk of many of the chronic diseases of high prevalence in Western societies, as well as in the developing countries that are being exported to the rest of the world. Human beings evolved on a diet that had a ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids of approximately 1 to 1. Some of you may remember Sean Baker's blood work, showing low testosterone, pre-diabetic blood indicators, and Sean Baker appears unable to lean out, usually fluctuating around 20% body fat. Given that the diet of the feedlot cow is optimized to cause weight gain and many of these obesogenic factors certainly end up in the meat, this could explain a lot of Sean Baker's health. In addition to the obesogenic effects of estrogens and omega-6, antibiotics may be linked to weight gain. The link between atrazine, a xenoestrogenic herbicide found in feedlot beef, and insulin resistance may explain his A1C levels as well. Testosterone therapy prevents diabetes, so maybe just higher testosterone would fix his numbers. Basically, Sean Baker seems like a good case study for the hormonal and obesogenic effects of industrial feedlot beef. He is incredibly talented and gifted in the gym, but can't seem to overcome the effects of his grain-fed beef diet. The more industrialized the production, the cheaper the meat is, the higher the level of agrochemicals, the worse it probably is for you. These chemicals estrogenate the animal, fattening it faster. That's the opposite of what you want in your body. When you eat these animals, many of these agrochemicals pass into your body. I know some people have had good results eating bad grain-fed beef, Imagine how much better results they might have had on a higher quality, more grass-fed, cleaner beef diet. Industries like Cargill and Tyson support laws that allow imported beef to be labeled as product of the USA. These companies may be behind the USDA seizing to regulate the term grass-fed. Agricultural Marketing Service will no longer verify applicants' programs to the standard. Simply giving feedlot cows a little bit of herbicide sprayed GMO corn stalks qualifies as grass feeding at this point. They don't want you to be able to tell the difference between their crappy, mostly grain fed feedlot beef from overseas versus local pure grass fed meat from a farm down the road. We already talked about Sean Baker as a case study, but what about the population? Is there any data suggesting our bad grain-fed beef could be harming the public? In fact, there is. America has some of the lowest meat standards and one recent study found unprocessed American but not European or Asian meat was associated with increased mortality. Shout out to Gallant at Optimizing Me on Twitter for support on reference information here. Look for a live stream with him coming soon and get your questions ready. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon and share it if you can. If you guys are on a budget and worried where you can get quality animal products, I found that wild caught fish, uh, mackerel, herring, sardines can be very affordable and it's arguably better uh, to consume a small amount of high quality meat with a carbohydrate source than it would be uh, to stuff yourself full of industrial grain-fed beef. 
If you guys uh, would like to support me further, uh, you can check out Frankie's Free Range Meat, providing you guys with high quality, nutrient dense animal foods at an affordable price. This includes grass fed beef, fat, organ meats, uh, pemmican. Check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com to see what we have available. I also have Frankie's Naturals, minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. So if you want to look like a statue on the inside and out, check out both of those things, guys. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of your week.